Analysis. Welcome to Analysis. Today I'll be talking about traffic problems and ways to solve the problems. Throughout the world, traffic is a huge problem. Millions of people are forced to leave early to get to work on time. I will show you ways to reduce traffic. Some of them are doable, some of them require investment. Car pulling can reduce traffic. Imagine having four people in a workplace and they all have cars. This group of four people all live in the same town. They take it in turns to commute to work, driving on behalf of the three other people, thereby eliminating three cars from the road. The people get a monetary advantage because they save on fuel, because they're only spending the fuel when they're doing the driving. The less cars there are on the road, the less traffic there is. Pedestrian crossings also cause traffic because when the light changes red, the cars are forced to queue up behind the red light. Every crossing on the road contributes to more and more traffic. If the road is very long and has many crossings, the traffic can get out of hand. We can replace the crossings with a ramp and underpass. The pedestrians would just simply walk underneath the road. The ramp would only need to go up two and a half metres to clear the heads of almost any people. The people waiting at the crossing would not need to wait for a green light, they'd just simply walk underneath the road. Trains could be built that take cars on board. A car train would take cars away from the roads. This would reduce traffic. If the cost of using a car train is cheaper than the fuel used to commute, then the people would always use it. When cyclists ride on the road, the cars slow down to avoid hitting them. You could build a bike lane that is suspended above the footpaths by pillars. The cyclists would be separated from the road and the pedestrians underneath the bike lane would be shielded from rain. Access to the bike lane would be achieved by a simple ramp at the end of the road. The ramp would only have to go up two and a half metres. A roof could be added to the bike lane with solar panels in it. That will make the bike lane profitable instead of having a cost to it. It would also keep the rain and the sun's rays out of the biker's face and head. And that would make an incentive for them to use it more often. A lot of traffic is caused by drivers driving too fast. As they drive too fast, they bunch into slower drivers and cause a, a clump. The clump causes clots in the junctions and slows down all the traffic on the grid. People that drive too fast also have more accidents, and accidents also cause more traffic. So leave early and drive slower, and don't be rushing to work. Follow this simple rule. If your fuel tank is 50% or less, then refill at the next filling station that you pass. Car A in this diagram goes straight to the petrol station because he's passing by and his tank is 50% full. Car B on the diagram has been forced to make a diversion to the fuel station that is hundreds of metres long. The reason he's made that diversion is because his tank's nearly empty and he won't have time to fill when he travels to work in the morning. This is extra traffic. Cars that use fuel benefit from having a full tank all the time because contaminants in the fuel never get into the engine and mess up the oil. If your sat nav is smart it can connect to the internet and detect when there's a problem in the road and, that can, and it can redirect you on a better route. So if you're driving to work and you know where you're going you can still use the sat nav knowing that it will send you on the route with the less traffic on it. Every day, millions of children commute to school. This places a huge strain on the grid and the transport system. If all the schools in the same area started at different times, and that would spread the load, because there'd be people commuting at different times, and also if they had different weekends, that would bring different benefits that way. Also, individual students can have different time slots, and that would also spread the load, so that there's always people travelling. 
Instead of all the students travelling at the same time, they spread it out so they're travelling throughout the day. We could also improve the transport, which will make people stop using their cars. One way I would do that is to make trains smaller and thinner, about half as thick. Train A carriage is a typical carriage you see on a train. Train B is the new carriage, it's half as thick. This smaller train would allow extra tracks to be laid down. This means extra routes can run in parallel on the same journey. Therefore you can have one set of trains going to every stop and one set of trains skipping stops on the same route that's already existing. This would be expensive but would be worth it. The same could be said of cars. If the passengers of a car were arranged so that they're in single file then the car could be thinner and three lanes could be in the place of two lanes on the roads and this would improve the flow. A cross-country ferry could be used to transport cars from one part of the country to the other. Motorists that are not in a hurry could save some money because the cost of the ferry would be less than filling a whole tank of fuel. Each ferry would remove hundreds of cars from the road for that whole journey. Solar panels could be installed above train tracks. This would uh, make the train transport cheaper because the utility bills would be eliminated from the cost. The reduced cost of using the train would take people away from their cars. Having transport that is too good to not use would take motorists away from the roads and reduce traffic. If we were to elect a government that wasn't controlled by lobbyists and greedy people with money and they weren't greedy themselves they would put a renting cap on all inner city flats commuters would not feel a need to move out of the city and commute to work if they were living in the city already in affordable accommodation there are many ways to reduce traffic on our roads some of them are more easier to achieve than others. Some of them only require a change in habit. Others require significant investment. Thank you for watching and I hope you're enlightened by this video and if you like what you see then feel welcome to subscribe or share or follow wherever this video appears. Until next time I say goodbye.